Hello everybody, welcome to the sublimation channel called Quickspe. My name is Dee and today we are going to be talking about toning down red, yellow, orange faces after they have been subjected to the heat press. It happens to all of us. We have this great picture in our hands. Everything looks good on the screen and we press it and wow, everybody looks red or orange or yellow. In this example, I am going to be using my own face, a picture of myself. I did have a video of kids, um, but then I realized I couldn't use the kid video without then turning off the comments uh, for their protection. So I redid this video with my face and I just wanted to let you know, it doesn't really matter whether or not you're trying to correct skin tone that is lighter than mine or darker than mine. This works across the board for toning down red, orange, yellow faces. Once you do it a couple of times, you are just going to know what to do when you get a client's picture. All right, so hopefully this video is just in time. I know a lot of seniors are graduating pretty soon and we're getting ready to do garden flags or cups. And we certainly don't want to send our customer something with red, orange, yellow faces. If this sounds like something you're interested in learning, I will see you inside. I have found a picture that I think will demonstrate this technique pretty well. It doesn't really matter actually whether or not a person is outside or inside, they could press red and most people do. So I found a picture, I'm outside, it's sunny but the sun is not on me, my hair is pulled back, you're going to see a lot of my face. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this because I don't need to first of all waste all that ink and secondly I just don't really need it just my face and a little bit of the surrounding area is going to be fine for doing my test so I'm going to crop this picture I'm going to just come above my hair there get a little bit of my shirt come in come in and that way I'm just not wasting a whole bunch of ink uh, for no reason I don't really need to do that and now with a movable little trimmed up picture I'm just gonna make sure that it's like between two and a half and two and a quarter inches there it is and I'm only concerned about that because I want to be able to put like four in a row here and then four below and I am using eight and a half by 11 paper, so I want it to all fit. And it's gonna fit. As long as I'm between two and a half, two and a quarter, that should be fine. It's about the right size. You don't wanna go any smaller than that, or it's gonna be very hard for you to see the print after it's pressed. I have my face. I am going to copy and paste myself across the page several times. And I'm just going to keep doing it. Now that I have my face broadcast across the page several times, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert some text so that I can keep track of what is what. This very first one is the original, no change. Now we're going to start making adjustments to all of these pictures except this one. This is our original and it's a no change. We're not going to change anything about it. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go in the temperature field. And just about every single design program has a way for you to increase or warm up the temperature or decrease, cool down the temperature. And even if you're in Microsoft Word, you can do this. I'm in PowerPoint. In any really um, active design program, we'll have this option. I'm going to go over to the picture format. I'm going to click on the little picture. And I'm in the picture color portion. I'll just close that in case you didn't see it. Picture color. And you see that we have color tone and we have temperature. Don't really go into the presets, but you can see that our original picture has a temperature of 6,500. And what we're gonna do is we are going to increase 
our temperature by 500 on this row. And then on this row, we're going to decrease our temperature by 500 every single time. So this one here, we are going to come over here and we are going to increase the temperature to 7,000. And then this one here from 7,000, we're going to 7,500. And then this one here from 7,500, we're going to 8,000. And then it's a good idea to, of course, put your temperatures in a text box. I like um, to actually put it in the text box. I don't just like to put it on a piece of paper. Then I got to find the piece of paper. I, I just kind of like to um, have it right on the print itself. And that's if you want to just like keep track of it on a separate piece of paper, go ahead. I just find that a little more cumbersome. So this one was 7,500. We're going to double check these in just a second. That one was 8,000. In this row here, remember this is temperature 6,500. That's the original. I'm clicked on it. This one is 6,500. So now I'm going to come down 500 degrees. So now I'm going to cool it off. 500 points that's 6,000 this one is going to be even 500 less that's going to be 5,500 this one's going to be 5,000 and this one is going to be 4,500 all right and I will label these here Let's just go back in here and make sure we are right. We don't really want to do this again. We want to do it once <laughs> and be done with it. This is our original. The temperature, you guys can watch the temperature as I change the pictures. That one is the original. It's 65. We're going to warm it up 500 to 7,000. 75, 8,000. Then we're going to cool it off. 6,000, 5,500, 5,000. 4,500. That is great. Now, if you guys think it would be helpful to have this template with the numbers on it, I'm going to put a link in the show description to my website for a free template. It'll be in PNG format and it will um, be set to print on eight and a half by 11. And I will, of course, remove my face and it will just be the numbers. Now, I never need to like warm up my pictures, but in, if you are experiencing the blue face or the gray face, this is going to help you increase it. Plus, you never know if somebody sent you a photo with a filter on it. The iPhones are famous for being able to cool off a photo, and so it has all these blue tones in it that you don't really know until you go to press it, then they appear. That's why we go in both directions of the scale, but we don't do as many warm because it's not as likely to be the problem. The bigger problem in this whole video really is about taking the red, yellow, orange out of the face. But every once in a while, you might run into why is this face pressing blue or gray? And that will help you. And warming it up a little bit will help you understand whether or not somebody had a cool filter on their photo. All right, with that done, let's move on. All right, I just shored this up a little bit. I put the actual numbers down here on the bottom row just so there was no confusion about the top row and the bottom row. Now I am going to get ready to print and that is as easy as Control P as in print, Control P. And that brings up my print menu. I'm going to make sure, of course, that I am printing to a sublimation printer. There's my little 2720. And I'm going to go into the print properties all of these settings here, I teach in a different video how to set up the four most common ways that you will be printing a sublimation print. If you haven't already watched that video, I will link to it right now. Also link to it at the end of this video. But because I am printing faces and I want it mirrored, I am going to click the people faces mirrored and I'm gonna click okay. All of my settings are in there because I preset them and I'm going to click print. All right, we're gonna print this out and then we are going to press it.
And while my face prints out of the 2720, I'm going to cut a piece of scrap polyester and get ready to press it. Hey guys, while that's pressing, I just wanted to take a second to talk to you a little bit about temperature. More and more, I am leaning much more toward like between 380 and 390 degrees Fahrenheit for my thinner polyester. What's your sweet spot for just plain old white polyester? Let me know in the comments. And here's what it looks like. But to be fair, this probably all looks pretty good to you because the video that I use for recording adjusts for all the wrong colors. So I'm going to switch this to a camera that does not adjust for colors just so you can really truly see what I see when I look at this. All right, let me switch to that camera now. Here is the fabric that I am looking at. I got a piece of paper behind it so that... You can't just see right through it. Let's take a look at my original. And you can see even my original photo, that would just be way too red. And it, I know it's surprising. My picture looked really good on the screen. It didn't look like it was gonna have a red cast to it, but that is uh, my original press. That's the original photo, no changes. And then as I warmed it up, it just gets worse and worse. But as I cool it, as I get to the cooler temps, everything starts to improve. And it looks much more like my picture. I'm liking the last two. I know you can't see it in person, um, but the last two to me look pretty good. But now I'm going to do just one more small adjustment between these two to see which one I really like the best. I'm just going to pop up the brightness on these two and I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so we're back at the computer and I've just copy and pasted those two favorite photos in a new sheet and I am going to up the brightness on each of them just 10%. And the reason we do increase brightness is because pictures have a tendency to just look a little bit flat or one dimensional. And so adding just a little bit of brightness can really help just add a little bit of life back into my face. So there are two ways we can adjust the brightness. And the first way is while you are printing, and I'm just gonna press Control P and it will bring up my printer. And we go into the printer properties. Now I would stay on this for mirrored, but I would go into my more options tab up here. I would come over to the advanced tab here. And then you can see my brightness here. I can just change that to 10 and it will increase it. Make sure you click OK and then press print. Now I am not going to do it this way and I will tell you why um, when I just up the brightness in the actual print properties I'm just really changing the way these print I'm not changing the photo. So when all is said and done I'm going to change my whole photo to the preferred temp and the preferred brightness, and then I'm going to save it that way. So the way that I'm going to adjust the brightness is I'm just going to click each one, and I'm gonna come over into the formatting, and I'm gonna to come to the brightness, and I'm just going to type 10 in there, and I'm gonna do the same for this one. So either way, it will work. Now I'm going to print it and I'm going to press it and we'll see if this kind of gives my face the life that I was hoping it would. <laughs> All right, I will see you back in just a second. All right, guys, I popped up the brightness just a little bit on the two that I like the best and I got one that I really like. All right. I'm going to bring you over to the other camera that doesn't adjust for color um, so that you can see 
what I see. And then we'll just do one more final side-by-side -side comparison. This is how my face pressed on the heat press on polyester. After making the two adjustments, there's my final result. And that's how I get the red, yellow, orange out of a photograph. Okay, everyone, and for the final step, let's not skip this because this is the whole reason why you did it. Make sure you save your photo with the new settings. Here is the old photo that I uploaded. I changed the temperature to the 4500. That was, that was my preferred temperature of the final two settings here. I like that how that pressed best. So I'm in my original photo. I cooled it off to 4500 points. And you can see that here. And then I upped the brightness 10%. And then I can just save it as a picture. And I usually do something, I call it something like final in the actual picture. All right, so final me, I know that whenever I want to do a project with that picture, I use what is called final. All right, and just one more thing to mention here. If you get to the point where you have a selection between one or two and you think you could even hone it down even better, definitely go ahead and do a different between these two and maybe make it 4,600, 47, 48, 49. And I would do this as a professional. I would do it if I was doing like a really big order of maybe memorial shirts or something where you really want that person to look exactly like that photograph looked. But this at least will serve as a guide of what to do. So we start off with the 500s, but if you want to even hone it more, don't be afraid to come in and change them by increments of 100, especially if you're making a good buck on this order. All right, let's go to the wrap up. That is going to do it. It really is that simple. Now, I know at first it seems like an awful lot of work and you got to use a couple pieces of sublimation paper and you got to press a couple times and you got to use scrap fabric. But once you do this, your future pictures, you're just going to kind of know, okay, I need to tone down my pictures. I need to go cooler or I need to go warmer. And you're just going to have a new benchmark. I'm to the point, I just know a photo setting just by looking at it and you will get there too. But this is going to get you a lot closer. I really hope you found this information beneficial. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, turn that like button blue for us, and consider subscribing to the channel, and you will get notified the next time we upload our next video about sublimation. Until next time, happy sublimating, everyone. You can catch us here or at our website, quicksby.com. Take care, everyone. Bye.